don't breathe the air. The air is bad. 100 million people are being warned about the air quality in the United States, and this right here is why. You're looking at EarthCam shot of New York City, which right now, at this moment, has the most hazardous air in the entire world. An online calculator suggests that breathing this air right here, outside of this studio right now, for 24 hours is equivalent to smoking 17 cigarettes. And it's not just here in New York City. This air is moving across the country. So how can people protect themselves? Joining me now is NBC News medical contributor Dr. Kavita Patel. So I woke up to my son coughing this morning. He's not sick. He just couldn't stop coughing. How dangerous is it for little kids, for the elderly, for people with underlying conditions, but then also just for healthy folks? Yeah, Katie, it's incredibly dangerous for anybody right now, especially if you're in like New York City and surrounding areas. But as you mentioned, this likely will spread across the United States. I just want to plug airnow.gov, A-I-R-N-O-W.gov. That's the place that people can go to right now where the Environmental Protection Agency and other government agencies post by zip code and city what your air quality index is. Think of the air quality index, Katie, as a yardstick from zero to 500. The higher the number, the worse it is. The air quality index where you and your son are right now is covering around 347. That's worse than the air quality in New Delhi. So this is absolutely serious. At this level of hazardous air quality, Katie, we recommend everyone stay indoors, but especially younger people and people with chronic conditions, including pregnant women. You can be especially at risk for lung irritation from those particles from the wildfires. So what do you do if you have to go outside? Yeah, if you have to go outside, honestly, this is where a lot of what we learned in COVID comes in handy. Many of us probably have those N95 or KN95 masks tucked away, forgotten about in many places. I still have mine in a lot of my bags and my coats, but get those out. That can help you if you need to go outside. If you can stay indoors with your windows shut, and if you have air conditioning, turn the air conditioning on, Another piece of advice I give patients, though, is that if you're indoors, don't broil any meat or use any, not that anyone should be using a fireplace, but be careful about creating smoke or congestion in a closed space indoors. When you go outdoors, make sure that you can do as much as you can with masks to protect yourself. But with this level of hazardous index, I would say stay indoors as much as you can. I can taste it right now. I have a kind of a, um, yeah. like a grit in my mouth. I've been indoors. Yep. I was only outdoors for a few minutes today to walk from my house to the subway. Um, how dangerous is it to be indoors? I mean, we had a, a Broadway show go on pause because the lead actor couldn't breathe and, and she had to be taken off stage and instead, she's fine, instead a, um, uh, uh, an understudy had to take over. How, how dangerous is it indoors? It can be incredibly dangerous if you do not have air purifying mechanisms or air circulation, which is why I'm trying to encourage people to run of their air conditioning or fans or something to circulate the air if you do have some of those air purifiers that you were using during covid to keep the air filtered that can be helpful too but again this is dangerous times and check no matter where you are in the country airnow.gov that can help trying to go outside dr kavita patel thank you very much <laughs>